And nasa dulo si Ana. Ah, click me professional tab andun. Nasa professional tab siya. Meron, meron sa Dota, nasa professional tab. Ayun oh, nakakamiss oh. Talagang Riyadh Master, s'yempre binigay ang specter ni Ana. Alright. Ayun oh, boss Ana in the house. Ah, kami si Ana and Jerax. Si Coach Jerax at saka si Ana. Oh. Let's go. Ang ganda na ito. Yan, game 1, game 1. Uh, two games lang to, two games in a row lang to. Game 1 and game 2 lang to. Ayan, Savvy Gaming Group. Ayan. Shout out to sa Gaming Group and the Riyadh Masters 2022. Kagagaling lang sa pub. <laughs> oh, online daw tayo sa pub ganyan eh. Alright, first game na ito. Kasabay na ito yung RNG versus Nigma Galaxy. Woo! Let's go. Ayan, Gamers88. Ayan, shout out po sa Gamers88. We have Lacos and Garrett. Ayan na. Grabe naman yan. Sheesh. O, paano? Bahala na kayo manood. Let's go, guys. Off ko na, Maiko. Ay. Let's go, let's go. He's gonna die. First blood's gonna come straight out for Liquid, and Anna's the one to get it. What a return to the pro scene for him. You could not ask for a better start. I mean, they just got him a first blood. He's using the career already. Ah, bakit wala ng pinoy invitational lang po ito? For anything greedy this time around. Ah, ang Riyad Masters at ang Gamers 88 ang mamimili na mga team. Magic stick. Get a bit more of that regen as well. As Liquid set themselves up after that. A double team, basically five man smoke from both sides, collapsing into the river, but I like we're getting that upper hand early days. And they had a very flexible draft all the way through as well, right? We were thinking you you're calling for the Wyvern mid, we weren't sure where any of these heroes were going. And in the end, it does end up being that that Mickey Wyvern in the mid lane. A bit of a scrap down the bottom rune. Insania charging forward with Big the box of Anna coming back in towards Moon Meander. Oh, they're going nice to get the body, body blocks from Bryle. Beautifully done. That was such a nice play from Insania going in. Dawnbreaker, level 1, level 2, like level 3. This hero deals insane amount of damage. Uh, you have a stun, like coming out from position 5, and uh, your carry is off to a really good start. And look what Anna is building. He's like, I didn't check Five what the new remain. builds are. I'm just going to go do my own style. I'm going to get that blade mail. I mean, it's a decent blade mail game against Tiny, against Keeper of the Light, even Terrorblade. Historically, it's a good matchup for Terrorblade against Spectre because mm -hmm. I don't know if they have enough burst. And we're talking about like BKB piercing abilities as well later on. The only one that they got is pretty much Wyvern ulti. And I'm yeah. not sure if that's going to be enough because yes. uh, Terrorblade will get Sunder. They do have like two saves. They're not typical saves, but having Nightmare and also having Tiny Toss is something that could change things around. Yeah, get that TP out of trouble. That's uh, something they're definitely going to have to look towards, right? You mentioned the global presence from Liquid. They've got the ability to set up with, uh, you know, Blink Ravage, the Winter's Curse, even Marcy just running in and disposing someone can cause issues for TSM. So they've got plenty of heroes who kind of want to play from the floor. Good evening, good evening. Habang nakapost. Shout out sa inyong lahat. Magandang gabi. Jump with the tiny without blink dagger. Ana is back. Spectre. Spectre si Ana dito. Responding to those initiations from TSM. With the reset tools the panel was talking about. Absolutely. Like they have... 
two like, probably the best abilities. I mean, we can add uh, Elder Tatan, which is not a popular hero right now, or a Shaker, but having Tidehunter and Vyvern to be able to counter initiate, and also bringing numbers with the Dawnbreaker ulti, another one of those abilities that can turn things around, yeah. coming in with the Spectre. <laughs> it's going to be difficult, but uh, as we said, it's going to be cooldown dependent, so they, they're going to need to take fights like every two minutes. So do you think this is very much an indication that Liquid want to slow the pace of the game and kind of build Anna up here for the first game of the, of the tournament? Because they seem like a very reactive team. Not necessarily one that wants to go out. You know, their, their lack of stuns is maybe an indication of that as well. They're not a ganking squad, right? They are reacting to what TSM will be bringing to the table rather than making their own moves. Absolutely. They don't have that, like, classic initiator. It's uh, difficult to also curse into... Like, they don't have that setup. Like, curse into... Dispose, curse into uh, Starbreaker doesn't seem as strong. Uh, I'm, I'm looking mostly at the mid lane, how this is going to go. Tiny, super strong mid laner. Vral has been on point uh, with his gameplay, I'd say, even in the last year and a half. Every single game he plays, he just keeps getting better and better. Ubu, a bit of a turnaround potential there with the stick. And Zai taking a beating up top as well. Tarot Blade, of course, does pack a punch. And Tamado will be looking for a bit of vengeance after losing his life as that first blood. Currently sitting at 5 CS. So TSM so far doing very well with all three of their cores top of the board. And yeah, just that point about Bryle. I've seen this a lot, you know, from them when they were undying now with TSM. They love these little snipe picks where, you know, Bryle has an amazing hero pool. But they love taking heroes oh, away from their opponents. Oh, they get him. Down he goes. Zai, oh, he's going to lose his life. No, he's not. Boxy just disposes the Terror Blade back. And Zai, hiding in the tree, he's going to be perfectly fine. Unless Tamada oh, get a just couple hits and he went back to die. If he can get a, turn ki a return kill, that's going to be pretty big. Do we have a jump? Tamada. Rebound. What's he got left? He's got a bit of mana regen with a mango and a stick, but he doesn't want to keep going for it. Metamorphosis, too much to handle. Yeah, sitting at 10 armor on Terror Blade, those right clicks early on, especially from a hero like Marcy, is not going to do the trick. Same light like bottom. Light. Yeah, Anna and Senior just battering into this Night Stalker, but he's pretty tanky, right? Lots of armor, so after the magic damage is dealt, he's able to withstand most of that damage coming from Liquid. But yeah, they love picking Bryle, these heroes, to steal a hero away from their opponent mid laner. Like they did it at you know, like TI with Storm Spirit, they would steal it away from Fnatic. Now Tiny, of course, we were really excited to see a Mickey Tiny as he's been popping off recently with that. But giving it to Bryle, of course, going to be a great, great play there for TSM. Was I contesting? Beats away the Terror Blade. Uh, there's always going to be a kill threat on this DB, especially if they keep him at like 70% uh, HP. With, uh, I mean, minus armor is okay. I mean, you still play into Terror Blade, but uh, there's a decent amount of magical damage that can come out. Especially as the game develops, you know, they get that Witch Blade on the Wyvern as well. Some good ways to deal with the TB. They are still going to be relying on those big old TB Sableye. Getting battered now by Insania. Great. Great, just aggressive move forward onto that NS. It seems like Liquid here, in this laning stage, they really are just bullying TSM, spamming out their spells, winning out these regen trades. We've got a lot of tanky heroes. You don't want to be fighting into a Dawnbreaker, Tidehunter, Spectre, naturally tanky and able to withstand a lot of that early pressure. Yeah, they're playing very aggressively on the lanes, and uh, now Insania bottom, trying to pull the lane back. Dawnbreaker, as a support, does consume a lot of mana. He's buying a stick. Uh, seems like he's uh, going to go back to base, trying to keep up with the courier. <laughs> courier a bit too speedy. Should be able to mount the courier, jump on its back, and speed, speed home. Give us a mount in Dota 2 as Mick again getting tossed around. We'll fly over the little cliff there. Still had stick and very far, so very unlikely he was going to drop. Uh, Insania might need to TP mid and refill his bottle because uh, Ana on the bottom's full HP, so uh, Mick, they, they, they're playing around him. Like they're trying to shut him down, and good this goal. is not a, that good of a matchup for Vyvern where he, like. It, 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 you don't have enough right-click damage to be able to... Oh, I'll shut up. Let's Back see what happens here. He's doing a lot of damage into Boxy, and yeah, over-aggression now from Liquid. Metamorph says came back up, so Terra Blade's able to fight back. It's a bit of a difficult matchup for Vyvern. Uh, you can't match Tiny's farm. Yes, yeah. Tiny just has uh, much more damage compared to you. B bottom, Moon. Good silence. 
Saberlight stops the Starbreaker from coming out in the first place. And I guess Wyvern not very good at clearing small camp either, is she? Very much focused on the lane itself. It's a lot of mana, because you use 135 mana uh, just on level 3 to be able to clear the small camp, and the first one doesn't even get yeah. hit, so you still need to do right clicks, and you like just don't have time. enough damage, pretty much. Yeah, you need to stay in the lane and get the XP. Now on bottom, TSM, FTX, they will start to put a bit more pressure. It's night time! It is night time. Just... I, I mean, do they want this to be nighttime or daytime? They have a guy called Saber Light, and they also have Keeper, Keeper. of the Light. <laughs> well, yeah, there's also uh, yeah, the ban on Luna, right? They don't want that double nighttime, but Boxy is rotated down to bottom, looking to make some action and find a pick on to Moon Meander. That's nice to see from Boxy. He's been a, a, a real great player transitioning into this position for, honestly, his Dawnbreaker, his Marcy have been spot on. Very good at rotating into these lanes to offer the kill threat and alleviate some of that pressure from some of his core players as well. Timato is using that info because Boxy showed bottom and now he's getting levels, being level 6 on the Terror Blade because he got that one kill alone. Uh, it, it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, just getting the levels on Terror Blade because he will soon probably be pressured out of the lane and then you can go with the levels into the jungle. On the bottom lane, they're trying to keep up with the, the pressure that Team Liquid is doing. Ah, uh, Night Stalker's only level 4, a bit under-leveled. Yeah, it's, it's been rough. His Kotal hasn't really given him that safeguard, because Munia, yeah, Munia just keeps getting jumped straight back in onto the Kotal. And you're not speedy enough to slip away from Liquid, who are now making up a tri-lane down bottom. And what's that lane like if TB's left alone, if Bane wants to try and transition out of this top lane? Will Tide start edging out the TB coming out on top? Uh, they want levels on Tidehunter. He was also a bit under-leveled, and uh, now he's uh, keeping up. 35 CS. Uh, same say CS as Vyvern from the mid lane. Like, I also want to see what happens when Bryle starts to make rotations. He also found a really good item. Tumblr's Toy on Tiny oh, great. gives you mana, gives you ability to close the gap. Uh, one of the better, if not the best tier one item, in my opinion. Yeah, go straight on top of some of these heroes and bring them down with your combo. Sable Light. Now backed up by Dubu, so they do move that Bane down towards the bottom lane. And it looks like Kotal's sitting in behind mid as well, so TSM kind of setting up this with this defensive bunker around some of these core heroes in the mid and the bot lane. Invisible. It looks like Tiny wants to get a little more active though as they smoke down towards bot. Liquid, I don't see Bryle. He's hiding and waiting. Nightmare comes out. Insane, you're going to have it transferred across to the Marcy. Getting blown up though. And TSM brings the full force. Four men into this bottom jungle and chasing in towards Insania. Nice time by Saberlight to be able to silence him and uh, gonna get another one. Dubu gets the double kill. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's good for Dubu, but you would want to give it to either Tiny or you want to give it to Night Stalker. Got money for boots now. There we go. All abilities pretty much for Team Liquid are available. All three big ultis. We're talking about Wyvern, who does have uh, haste in the bottle. And uh, also Tidehunter getting the solo levels. Tide's going to be very difficult to pressure out of the lane. And if yeah. you look at what the Zai decided to go for, it's four points in Kraken Shell. Like, this guy's oh, not wow. dying. It, it's super defensive. It's incredibly tanky. And onto Tomato they go. He does have Sunder leveled. They are going to ravage him, though, and he can't get it off. Down goes the Terra Blade. Maybe should have left the lane a little bit earlier, but a dive under tier one onto Moon Meander now. Ana gonna come in with a haunt and a slate will arrive. Moon Meander down and out, and this tier one tower, not long for this world. This is the power of Team Liquid's lineup, being able to fight every two, three minutes, uh, especially on like a Spectre level one ulti. It's literally three minutes. Yeah. So that's gonna be very, you know, like it's the low, probably the longest cooldown in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Is there a black hole? Is black hole higher? It's definitely one of, right? It's like top three longest. Almost cool. I mean, Wraith King's ulti is super long as well at level yeah, one. Yeah, it was uh, 200. And now on the bottom lane, yeah, Zai. Nice stalker, Dark Ascension. But like you said, Zai has these crack and shell points all skilled up, so they'll turn and face into Mika instead, getting the mid laner a much juicier kill. Some think... tips coming in. I don't think you can kill this Tide Hunter. He doesn't even have any magic resistance. Let's see. I know he's Tiny, got no Ravage. Full combo. I'll go into the back lines instead. On Insania. Avalanche stunned. Sableye and Brawl making the absolute perfect read there. Knowing, understand, understanding, like you said, they can't go on the Tide. Find the supports, rather. 
That is a lot of room for Anna, though, who went up top, got involved with some kills, got the tower, and now gets that free farm all along that lane. But how important are these moves for TSM? Because you know, looking at these drafts and thinking about how this game's going, it feels incredibly important for them to pick up the tempo. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, TSM, they are making the boost. They are 1k gold ahead. They did lose a tower, but they got something in return. I think TSM has a pretty good understanding, like, when they need to mirror the movement of the enemy team and uh, just when they need to decide to fight and where. Also, this is something that has been... Um, like relatively popular lately. We're talking about the Night Stalker item build, mm. not going for shard anymore, but instead going for the Aghanim Scepter build to be able to have AOE Void, uh, which is uh, pretty good. And also uh, like another mini stun. It's a, most importantly, yeah, it's just an ability to stay on top of the network with the Night Stalker. I keep on scaling. Whenever you've got a hero with a passive like Hunter in the Night, something like that, where you are a, a right-click physical damage dealer or can build into one, Having some kind of farming tool always feels incredibly good. And it looks yeah. like it's Liquid's turn to go for a smoke play. One thing we didn't mention is Keeper of the Light uh, using Chakra Magic on Terror Blade to oh, be yeah. able to lower the cooldown on his real ulti. We're talking about the meta here. Yeah, give him a way better uptime on it. On TSM, a long move up towards top. They see Down Anna. Haunt on cooldown for 15 seconds. Liquid, they know something's not quite right here, and Zai's TP top will reveal that smoke move and give that oh yeah, give Anna the safety he required. Still potential for them to move forward, take control of this top jungle again, but they are under dire vision. Well placed by Dubu to keep tabs on them as Brile chucks the combo onto them. The grip there as well. Ravage from Zai, and the Haunt comes in. They're focusing down the Bane. I'll get the pick up there. Brile stuck. Starbreaker landed, good damage onto them with a Keeper of the Light Blast, but it's not enough. They can't turn that fight, not without their TB, who is nowhere to be seen. Every single time their ulti is, they are available, they will definitely go for these uh, Pekas. And this was also a fight without uh, Vyvern ulti. When they grouped up, uh, pretty good Ravage from Zai to be able to uh, hit all four of them, actually. And uh, yeah. the global presence coming up from Spectre revealing where they are and the turnaround protection from Dawnbreaker is pretty nuts like DSM doesn't have that much burst potential if uh, Tiny is shut down if he uses his combo like the damage output from their heroes is pretty limited unless they're sitting inside the blast the uh, Night Stalker yeah. goes Sam because Terrorblade right now he's a completely different hero than Spectre like he wants to be able to farm his items while Spectre will always join whenever the haunt is available she's gonna be looking for the fights yeah, he, he is looking for that critical mass, perfect item timing. When the Manta's done, he can be that. You know, almost burst damage, physical right-click attacks coming in in the long drawn-out fight, and there is that replay back. Beautiful Ravage from Zai, and that Starbreaker connecting. Fortunately, Saberlight couldn't quite get there with the silence. But you're right, when Liquid are there with numbers, they are, they are all together grouped up. It's uh, easy math, Gary. Four heroes slash five heroes are much stronger than three heroes. So they are alive. Dubu. It depends which three heroes we're talking about, but uh, usually, usually it is like that. That's a good generalization. And Dubu trying his best here to drag out his inevitable death. Tiny arriving, doesn't get a pick with his combo, and now might have put himself in harm's way. Marcy looking to unleash a bit of damage they on They saw it, the chakra magic. They're going to respect another tiny combo. He's looking for it. He might burst Zai. It's so scary, isn't it? This chakra onto TB, chakra onto tiny, the continual damage output that they can offer. They don't have vision high ground, but they're still making the move up here. Straight on to Boxy. Brawl was thinking about going in and killing... Oh, curse top. And there's Saberlight. Saberlight will drop. Yeah, Anna, helped out by Mickey. They did have vision in that bottom jungle from TSM. That's how they made the jump in onto the Marcy. So I stand corrected there as they toss the tide now. Zai gonna have the Solar Guardian arriving, so he's safe and sound. Still that threat though. Nothing's easy for Liquid. They are perpetually being offered these engagements from TSM. Yeah, but still, Tomato on top of the net worth. Uh, he knows that he needs to farm up. The rest of the team will need to play four versus five. Keeper of the Light uh, will be allowing Tiny to use this combo earlier than expected. But uh, yeah, looking at the item build, Ana changed things around a little bit, going for Aghanim Scepter as his next item after finishing Blade Mail. 
So that will give them like another opportunity to jump the back lines, find this Keeper of the Light, and uh, just play the map more aggressive. Yeah, just keep that ball rolling. They've got that Wraith packed on the tide now, as we see. So in these, in these team fights where they've got the big... Oh, he's landing on the TSM. Wraith pack going to mitigate a lot of damage, which could turn things around. And then we straight on to Bryle now. Easy haunt forward, connect into this. Oh, are we watching a replay? It's a bit of deja vu there. Yeah, same part of the map. Like the same spot, and uh, Anna gets the kill. I mean, Mickey did get the kill, but uh, he is uh, going to back. Uh, going to go back to farming. Yeah, back we go. Finish off that Ags. Also, this build on Night Stalker, he did go for the shard first to be able to sustain himself in the okay. fight a lot more. He's all right. Now he's actually going to turn on the Sabrelite, curse him up. And Boxy arriving with the Unleashed Dispose. Down goes the Night Stalker. Saying good night. Nightmare the Zai Tide, but I don't think he's too bothered about that. Told me to stop and one of the, the one of the biggest things here, honestly, for me, looking at the net worth chart, right? You've got, yes, Terra Blade up at the top. Here's your single carry on TSM, but this Tricore of Liquid are farming incredibly well. Yeah, they're, they're looking really good. We also didn't talk about uh, Vibrant's items. Uh, you mentioned the Witchblade that the mid Vibrant's do go for, so that's their extra burst damage, like uh, overtime damage as well. It's a super good item now having Boots of Travel as well as uh, second item on Vibrant will allow him to like be even more active on the map. It's like, it, it, it's it always been like that, Gary. You know, playing against the global presence is very difficult. Now, there's so many moving parts you've got to consider. And it's so difficult to play as a TB and farm safely and efficiently at the same time. I think Tomato's has done a great job avoiding a lot of these team fights. Of course, his team is setting up that space for him to be that big one-hit carry in this kind of game. He's been hiding away, safe and sound. As Boxy attempt to jump on Brile, but Tumblr there's the Tumblr's Tumblr yeah, Do good, do good. Looking at the quick buy, Seems like everyone wants to get Aghanim Scepter oh, yeah. in this game, pretty much. Like, even Dubu on Bane wants to get it. It has 600 gold. It's going to take, like, another 25, 30 minutes until he can get it. Saberlight needs to be a bit more careful. They're thinking about uh, jumping in, and, yeah, they're going to close the gap. Yeah, they've got the gush there from Zai. Arrives just in time, but under that tier 2 tower, they don't want to die too is like, yeah, I can't reach him, but at least I can do something. So use this trusty shovel and digs up a mango. I need to press buttons. Got to cast my spells. Well, they knew that tier one mid lane was definitely going to be under pressure if they continued diving too far. Roshan a potential as well. They're waiting for Scotty on Tomato, and then he's going to be able to join these fights. Right now, he's been AFK pretty much farming, and uh, it's going to be available in uh, 400 gold. That's what makes the matchup against Spectre much easier, right? He's delaying the Manti ass as Dubu dies up in that top jungle. But TB kind of, maybe not skipping, but delaying the Manta, at least for now. Getting that Scardy a little bit earlier allows him to fight and battle back against Team Liquid. Zai, after finishing his Raid Pact, which is going to reduce a lot of damage coming out from Tiny, Keeper of the Light Blast. Like, overall, they don't have that hero that's going to come in and kill the Raid Pact other than Night Stalker, and I'm not sure if he wants to be that guy, because he doesn't have a BKB. He's the only one with the attack speed that can actually bring it down. Both of the supports are not going to do it, Tiny doesn't have it, and Thurway does not want to waste his hits for it. Yeah, but Bane wants to be standing there gripping someone. Kostal wants to be illuminating. I like that Zai is going back to Hood, because he understands that most damage is going to be magical, and he also sees Night Stalker not going for the physical damage, instead going for that Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's not really his job to deal with a TB. He's got Kraken Shell, which can help to get some of that damage. That's going to be down to the, the Wyvern. Yeah, he wants to be that big body in front that, that they cannot deal with. Just be very annoying. Also, he's not... Oh, oh save Sable like again. One, one more time getting chased. Yeah, Mika and Anna again pairing up to kill off the Night Stalker. Every time they see him on this side of the map, he's being hunted down. And a good indication there is some pings come out of Liquid and saying he knows he's got some dewarding to do in that bottom jungle now. It's one of those games, though, that it doesn't feel like either team has a great way to speedily take Roshan down. They they want to take a team fight first before they go into the pit, right? Absolutely. I mean, Terrorblade can do it when Spectre gets a, a Manta style. They do have more damage. Mm. Dubu thinking about getting the grip on Spectre, but Ana having a really nice read what's going on. Yeah, he 
he's, he's so good at that. He's never one of those players that pushes that one extra wave, that one extra creep. He always knows his limits. Superb at towing the line. So far, perfect game for Mana. 1-0 and 8. He knows uh, positioning is the key and also choosing when to fight with Spectre. And so far, he's been really on point. Uh, Aghanim Scepter is done. Um, so now having a Shadow Step, 40 second cooldown ability. Like, he wants to be able to join anything that happens on the map. And I will jump. That's the Anna Spectre, right? We've not, we've not seen his ability to buy back yet because he's not died. Maybe something that will come out a little bit later on. A good old Spectre buyback haunt. The turnaround potential from Team Liquid is pretty nuts, especially if we talk about the buybacks uh, taking the Roshan, Dubu. No Having backup. Jumped in there with a Shadow Step. And the rest of Liquid. Anna just stays up top, doesn't even move across to the Illusion. Insania. Defending these, these ward spots with his life, making sure that there's no real way for TSM to gain any traction on the map. TSM did not get a kill in like 10 minutes, pretty much. It feels but like they're, they're still back. They're, no, but they're still ahead. Uh, it feels like they're not gonna go with the just Scotty timing on Terrorblade. Instead, they're gonna wait until BKB is done because okay. you will disassemble the Dragonlance and then still it's gonna be a good timing. Like he he just farmed a full BKB in pretty much two minutes. Yeah, hey, we saw the uh, the Scotty timing. There. I think it was four minutes 40 ahead of average. Uh, so of course it's down to kind of skipping out the Manta style for now. Yeah, there it is. That's very, pretty very good timing. Line. Yeah, it's incredible. And also, Agatham Scepter on Night Stalker. It's coming out in 100 gold, so he will be good to go. At this point in the game, as, as Liquid, do you want to be waiting for TSM to make the move, or do you, as Liquid, want to be going and casting your ulties? They don't have that much tower damage. We like. There's some coming up from the Wraith Pact on the heroes when they group up, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like they feel much more confident if TSM is the one who's initiating on them. And the, yeah. we talked about the item synchronization. Uh, Agatham Scepter on Night Stalker done. BKB on TB done. Uh, I want to see them make a move. Look at that. Another one. Four minutes faster than this patch average. He, like Speedy uh, Tomato. Look at the difference. And we and go. 3,000 gold more than Spectre. He's already pre-gripped as well. Dawnbreaker can't even save it. Live and dead. And uh, now Dawnbreaker being slapped around by the Tomato TB. A couple of quick kills there for TSM, and we thought Liquid maybe would be a bit more comfortable waiting for that aggression initiation, but you've got to be together. If you're spread out, I'm uh, getting picked one by one. Ooh, as, that mm, was so close. You got the stun off. Uh, Tiny would be able to connect with the team, and now inside the pit they go. 25 seconds without Wyvern. Mika does not have a buyback. Yeah, team fight victory into Rochelle. That's what TSM were absolutely dreaming about. Liquid will still be ready to go and give it a good shot, though. They'll have a smoke. They'll have all their ulties ready outside of Solar Guardian. So still able to take a 5v fight even into Aegis, which I feel like over the past year has become more and more common. A team understanding this Aegis is going to be used to farm pressure towers and being able to fight into it. I guess that they teams never are really much better. felt too worried about Team Liquid going inside a pit and... Uh... It's a smoke time. They do have Ravage available. They do have Winter's Curse. Also, Blink Dagger on Wyvern, plus a Haste in the bottle. So Mika should be able to position himself well for a really good curse. Radiant there you see Tomato. He's going to send Illusions up high ground. Looks like he's read the situation pretty well. Got to be careful with the trajectory he takes, and he will be able to just skip and dance away from Liquid's initiation. And Boxy unleashes, but there's no targets nearby. So that will come to a close. And a lot of scribbling on the map there. Mid and top lane signaled by TSM to get the shove on. So they know Liquid are all down bottom. This is the you know, Liquid MO. They want to be together as five for these big wombo combos. So you see one of Liquid, there's going to be a lot there. Also TSM, they are holding hands together. Right now they're just going together, replenishing the meta on Terrorblade with Chakra Magic. And Ana might be in trouble. Now let's see. Night Stalker ulti not available for 15 seconds. Liquid starting to arrive, filter through into this top lane. Glyph will slow things down from TSM's side. They'll still be able to get that tier 1 tower corner easily though. It looks like Liquid not, not making any rash decisions. They're just very calmly sitting in this dire triangle. They've got vision there, so they're playing around the wards that they've already got up. And they know that Ana can potentially join in a fight that kicks off bottom with a haunt. 
He's very close to Manta style, so there's going to be a bit uh, more damage, more confusion. He actually has enough money to buy it. But he has two Manta styles queued up. Probably going to go for only one on Spectre. Two Mantas, Anna? That's ridiculous. Can't get away with that. We are very calm here. This is kind of what we expected, you know, going into late game, you've got Spectre, you've got these big team fight LTs, there's no real rush for Liquid to go out and force team fights or to try and break out of the, the rhythm that the game's currently in. You are somewhat happy with where the game state is, understanding that TB is going to be the, the be-all and end-all of the damage from TSM. Pretty much, because uh, Bryle did get shut down, like he's in the middle of the pack, Nightstalker has more farm than him. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. A uh, couple of those deaths, and they gave him ages. He's trying to look for an opening. Oh, yeah, the silence on the Zai. Uh, not helping him out there. They can't get the Ravage off until he does now, and they turn it back onto them, but Zai being pounded by this TB. Brawls the trade out, and they curse the TB during BKB, but Tamada is going to break out of it and focus into Anna now. Another combo in, and the Brawl tiny. Finding Anna Spectre. Liquid being broken. Saberlight still apart. chasing. And Saberlight with his silence again up. He's just diving back lines, looking for the supports. Mickey trying to stand his ground, but he can't fight back, and a five man wipe comes through. That was beautiful team fight from TSM FTX. I mean, we were expecting a big curse, but it only lands on Terrorblade, who does have a BKB on him. No one is around him. They understand that they need to position themselves further away and not give them like any openings to come back into the game. And now it's high ground time. I, All of that very, I'll, I'll be honest, like this is not a fight that's gonna like end the game, but it's very close. I, it's not good, looking good for Team Liquid. Also, they used All every... All cooldowns. Yeah, absolutely. Zai? How many of these AoE silences from, from the Night Stalker honestly fight when they're game defining? The fact that he stops the Ravage coming out early, he stops the supports from getting spells off. Kraken Shot doesn't help Zai against it. And also Moon Meander realizing that he needs to be able to replenish Night Stalker, just giving him this silence that, uh, like, Tidehunter was not able to get rid of it immediately, then he walked away, but uh, that's a that's a good way to deal with it. And Ana using Manta style, and then Solar Bind comes in. Like, this is one of the best abilities in the game, and then you get Scotty slow on top of that, and a full tiny combo. Yeah, giving Aegis to Brawl was such a smart idea, right? You know that TB is super... Farm. He's not really He's at not risk die. of dying. Like, they, they cannot uh, burst him from 100 to 0. There is no way. So Brawl coming back up with another combo to just keep that fight going and having these long extended team fights so you can you can withstand the initial team fight ultis out of Liquid. And now it gets even more difficult. Like we talked about the uh, Terrorblade against Spectre matchup, how it was always like oh, yeah. a TB favored. And now with the addition of Terrorblade, can actually build a Silver Edge. Like it's a good item because things changed. Oh. Mickey, blinking away from Brian. And now you have, tiny. sorry Gary, now you have break ability against both Spectre and Tidehunter. True. So Spectre's definitely not going to feel as good. Brawl will pick it up. Here we go. Brawl and Sableye straight onto the tide. Zai just disappears. They'll throw the Spectral Dagger down towards them. Boxy on the run. But Sableye's keeping tabs on this Marcy. They're tossing Tomato forward. I see if we can get a Scardy slow in. Rebounds, a pretty damn good spell, jumping into the tree line. He wants the big one. They're looking for Spectre, and they found her. Anna thought he was safe, hiding in these trees. Tries to go to the horn play, but he's solid stop. Manta Star's there, he's a tanky Spectre, sure, but Tomato laying it on to the spec, and down we go. Unstoppable Terror Blade. Perfect game from Tomato. Saberlight silences have been on point. Like, he's waiting Perfect. until something happens. Like, we talk about, uh, like, not allowing Tidehunter to use his abilities, uh, stopping the Star Breakers, and uh, now even on top of the Spectre. He managed to get the ulti off in the end, but they all grouped around the top lane, so he had nowhere to go. Absolutely worthy of a first phase pick, that, that Saberlight Night Stalker. And now, Liquid, we were talking about how. Now, potentially comfortable they're feeling with now, the game. Now, look at that Chad camera. I don't know. He's, zoom it in more. He's yeah, got to yeah. press the button. Zoom it on his face. <laughs> he's quite a character. <laughs> I mean, if there's anyone who I would call a cheeky devil in Dota 2, it is Saberlight. Oh, most definitely. And he's you would call him that. Yeah, he's a that funny sounds lad. Like something you say. <laughs> But yeah, I thought Liquid would be reasonably comfortable 20, 25 minutes in, but you know, TSM have just come out incredibly strong around the, you know, he's saying his TB timings, the items he's picked up. 
And Sableite again with his silence, stopping the aggression from Liquid. Might still die, he's got the backup of Dubu, silenced and caught. Not even close. But they can't kill Using him. Using the Hunter in the Night Shard. So trying to aim for the Bane instead. Spectre comes in and Dubu falls. And TSM perfectly happy with that to get Sableite, uh, Sableite out without a scratch. Oh yeah, Boxy. Attempting to jump Moon Meander, but that's never going to work. Speedy old grandpa on his horse, too fast for you. This is a big item that's coming out for Insania right now. Having the Aghanim Scepter on Dawnbreaker, 60% uh, miss chance. Oh yeah. It's going to be pretty big if they can get it off, but uh, we'll see. I mean, even Moon Meander, like, he's massive. We didn't talk too much about him, but uh, having this four Staff, uh, having Spirit Vessel, a lot of heals, and also... 12,000? Is that 12,000? 12, it is. Bloody hell. It reminds me of Moon Meander's Mirana. <laughs> Anything with the moon... Moonlight, like, celest yeah, celestial it, things, pretty right? Pretty much, like, he plays it really well. Oh, he's incredibly good. And here we go, smoke time again. They're 16k ahead. Triple BKB on side of TSM FTX against uh, Tidehunter, against Wyvern. I, I don't think there's enough damage. Like, Team Liquid will need to have buybacks. We just mentioned that Insania invested all of his gold, which he should, definitely. But uh, Tidehunter, he's very close to Aghanim Scepter, so a lot of that gold is unused. If you talk about, like, 16,000 net worth, and there's a courier flying, trying to get the full Aghanim Scepter on Tide. Yeah, so if we can which get he doesn't have enough gold for. It flew over a dire ward, so they know it's going. Liquid. Well, they are coming out of their base. Oh, they're going to start a fight here. Maybe they can jump Sableite. They get the blink ramage onto the backline supports. Blown up Dubu and Moon Meow. That's a good start. Sableite tries to swing back, but now he's a little afraid with no backup. BKB wearing out, and... Quick little retreat there, trying to hide in the tree lines. He's actually battling there. The Solar Guardian required to fight back. Brawl arrives, looking to blow up Mickey. Cottle buys back as well. Liquid yet to lose anyone, but Brawl and Tomato ah, still ready to He's come trying. back in. Nice Stalker finally dead after a long ass time running around that battle. And Tomato. One versus five, pretty much. <laughs> and he's used his BKB already, so Liquid might have a chance here to break back up the high ground, find the Terror Blade, but he's found himself a spot in the Ancient Camp and with his illusion to find the Boxy Marcy. Another buyback comes out, Anna's in as well. With Zai's help, they want Moon Meander, but Will-O-Wisp will slow them down. Brawl dead to Insania at long last. And Moon gonna heal himself on the retreat. Dubu, I don't think he can save his buddy there. Moon dead for a minute and a half. Dubu Tomato uh, on the up. run now, and Liquid. A sniff of a comeback. Dubu disposed back into Mickey. And inside the Roche Pit they go. It's, it's Aegis plus, uh, plus a shard, so that's going to be pretty big. Like, uh, I, I don't know, Gary. I, they were a bit disconnected on side of TSM FTX. Uh, Night Stalker went in, tanked a lot of damage, bought a lot of time, went into the Ancient Camp, uh, used Hunter in the Night to be able to get some HP back, but uh, it wasn't enough, so he comes back in one more time. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure where Tiny was. Was he controlled on the, the right side? Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't see. I was just like, all eyes on Sableite, right? He's the one Sableite was in. tanking all the damage in that fight. He was like 1v4-ing, going wild, and yeah, Bryle came in, Tomato came in a little bit later on. But if that had all been synchronized together with that team cohesion we expect from them, it would have been beautiful from TSM, but yeah, and, uh, great shown by Liquid still. Graph's looking uh, pretty wild. What's it doing? It's going up and down everywhere. Oh yeah, it's going, it's going back up. This is like crypto, pretty much, <laughs> in the last couple of days. Uh, Anna, look at that. He stole Shard from Moon Meander. And he has a Moon Shard right now on Spectre. Oh, wow. Yeah, very nice. I guess he wants to have like extra vision as well Journey when you night. play against the Night Stalker. And like having uh, that insane attack speed with Desolate, you, you can delete people. Oh, poor Dubu. Yeah, desolate illusions. Gosh, to slow him down. And Liquid, 35 minutes in, is starting to get into Spectre territory. Aegis in hand, of course. You mentioned the Moonshard. And Tidehunter. Aghanim Shard without an increased or improved Anchor Smash. So nice to hit into buildings. And pretty damn good against TB as well. It's good. I I'm not sure if he can allow to get close to the TV immediately. Well, find the Dawnbreaker. Is, is that it? 
Oh, they get the catch on to the tide as well. Drag back into the Willow Wisp. Zai stuck here. No way of escaping. They do have buyback on the tide, but now Liquid have always got to come back and maintain that middle lane over and over again. No need to use it right now. I think uh, Team Liquid got what they wanted from the previous fight. It showed that they can still like play this game. It looked very one-sided when TSM FTX decided to go inside the base, uh, get the mid barracks. But uh, yeah, second row, Sean. Still, this Terrorblade is huge. He's massive. He does have a full blood torn on top of that. Oh, look at that. Two of them come bottom. They're like, yeah, let's have a, have a bit of a poke at Anna. Nah, you can't touch this Spectre right now. I'm going to go with a Shadow Step. Where are we headed? Just giving vision. Scouting out Dubu. No, no longer giving vision. He's going aggressive, forcing reaction out of Sableite and very quickly jumping away. And Anna toying with them now. TSM are all grouped up together, though, around that bottom jungle spot. <laughs> Under Radiant Vision, but yeah, not for long. Dubu's there to clear it out. Also, very interesting talent choice from Saberlight. I guess he wants to perma silence people mm. with Chakra Magic, because usually people do go for 20 strength, because so it gives much. you damage. It's, it's a lot of damage. It's a lot of uh, just, just like tankiness. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, because uh, minus five seconds brings it down to 10, and the uh, seven is duration during nighttime, and then he gets refreshed. So, Gary, we're talking perma. about uh, perma silence. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's still good against the Tide Hunter, but you've got the Wyvern with BKB now. You're going to have this, this Blink Dagger and Marcy, so she'll be playing from Fog. We'll see who we can utilize it against with that almost permanent silence. Again, still a 14,000 net worth lead for TSM. Looking like they're still somewhat in control of this game, but Liquid ever present with that threat to fight back. And now they can start playing the more natural Spectre style, right? Anna can play one of these side lanes, push it all the way out. The rest of the Absolutely. team can smoke, and then they connect together with a horn to the Shadow Step. Especially with uh, this Aegis still up and running for yeah. another minute, uh, they would definitely love to take a fight. Let's see, they know. Team Liquid has a pretty good understanding where the enemy is. And then Sania inside the base. They only need to smoke with three heroes, because rest is global. Mm, Invin is tiny, got his own Shadow Blade. Probably working on the Silver Edge himself. And TSM just sat around down bottom, and knowing that Liquid are probably lurking Ooh, somewhere in the shadows. In a bottle for Terror Blade, we're getting into oh, wow. 20, level 25 territory as well. Spectre about to hit it after this wave. Yeah, Five percent extra dispersion, so even more damage spilling out to the rest of TSM and their teammates. And it looks like yeah, Dubu going to scout that high ground observer ward with his courier. Illusion sent across. Try and clear out that vision, but Mickey, thankfully for Liquid, does kill it off before, just before the wards will die. It still feels like pressure's coming Liquid's way, but I don't know, in, in the back of my head, I'm just like, team fight ulties, high ground advantage, defender's advantage with buybacks as well. Buybacks are going to be crucial for team Liquid. Uh, how are we standing right now? No one besides Ana has buyback on their side. So everyone investing into items. We'll see what they do. I mean, right now, TSM very, very casually just sitting here. They don't want to make any rash decisions. They want to play around Vision. They want to get the upper hand in these team fights, and they absolutely need to see where this Winter Wyvern is. Also, Timato decided to go for Boots of Travel. Hmm. Split Level push, two. Uh, split push, and also to be able to TP to Hero. So he can be anywhere, kind of play what type of a game Spectre is playing right now, to be able to match it. The pseudo Spectre. Uh, maybe even solo kill threat. And if he spots Anna out on one of these side lanes alone, maybe he could TP back. And with this Silver Edge Bloodthorn, offering a lot uh, of damage yeah. against her, right? <laughs> you can delete anyone with yeah. this type of a build. You have break mechanic, and you also have, like, everyone critting and also a silence leveler as well on him. A lot of attack speed is going to come out from this TB. It's huge. I, need, I, I think you, on Liquid, you need to have buybacks to be able to come back into the fight to try to kite to this Thoroughblade's BKB. Uh, you know that people are going to die. Like, he's going to kill at least two heroes in a team fight. Yeah, it's almost as if you kind of want some of your heroes to die first, not use their ulties, and then buy back to have your ulties Yeah, potentially afterwards. bait a BKB yeah. or a big ulti. 
There's like Zai can go in, not Ravage, bait BKBs, die, buy back, and it's like, hey, I've got Ravage now, and you've got no BKBs. Might be a plan there for Liquid. Uh, and there Zai, we go on Zai. He's ready for the four staff. Oh, it's insane, yeah, that's dead. Zai was nearby. Getting silenced by Sableye. And another one. A break as well. Oh, they've got the Solar Guardian coming in. The rebound, jumping about. The Winter's Curse on the Terra Blade now. Zai, cold embrace will heal him up, still holding Ravage. And now the BKBs are running out for TSM. Tomato might be in trouble, but he gets a big Sunder back. They do keep tabs on him though. Tomato, half health. Terra Blade making a swift escape off to the side and keeping the damage flowing. Insania blown up. Four heroes down on the side of Liquid as TSM are just snowballing and steamrolling through Team Liquid. That was beautifully done. The way they controlled the Tidehunter in that fight, even though he had a four staff, another layer of silence coming out, uh, and uh, he could not get the Ravage off. Good uh, decision from Tomato to hold that Sunder for a very long time. And uh, yeah, buybacks are coming in. That's the first one that they got. Well, before the throne falls, Anna will buy back on that Spectre. And that's the only one that they got. No Tide, no Marcy, no Dawnbreaker, so no team fight ulties. What can Anna do? Hit creeps, clear waves, and hope for the best, because look at Bryle coming straight in with Sableye, tossing the Wyvern back and into the Will-O-Wisp. Down you go, Mickey. Force a buyback out of the Wyvern as well. TSM come in quickly, claim another lane of barracks and the core kill. And look at in great stead now to just push this one to the end. Finish off the bottom lane. You've kept this Anna Spectre down under your boot. And Tomato incredibly strong, 40. Thousand net worth now. He's doubling up Absolutely on a Spectre. 40 beautiful minutes performance in. Performance by Tomato. Understanding what needs to be done. A oh, thousand wait. GPM. Only a thousand. One thousand and thirty-six. <laughs> well, what did he buy? He just bought something. I believe it's a full moon shard. <sighs> yes, it is. And Hell he yeah. popped a BKB as well. <laughs> and then drops it on the floor. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to use it. this BKB. I don't need it. He's going to bring it back to himself. Eats the moon shard up. He was just testing, making sure the BKB was working. Oh, well, well, Liquid are all alive yeah, again. Uh, Very close to having all their cooldowns ready, but welcome to my channel. Sons, Mean well, tied. They've you tied, you tied. Out again. Tied no BKB on tied. So Getting you controlled you. so beautifully by TSM and blown up by Brawler. Gets the ravage off for the last second, still alive somehow. And Anna, really pumping it towards the tiny, but the shadow blade gives him the safety to slip away from danger. Tomato. TB oh, opening up on the Spectre. They can't kill off Anna and Sableye finally does fall. Linkwitch, good show in here, but Brawl's back in. Tossing Mickey into the arms of the Terra Blade. Okay, Tomato but... able to stand his ground up on his cliff top. No one can make their ways up the staircase. Tomato does have a Sunder. He's he thinking indeed. about it. He but needs a big target. He wants Anna. Spectre. If Anna comes nearby, Silver Edge. Sundered. That's Dubu hey. down. Anna still charging forward. The Sunder from Tomato on an illusion. Zai comes in with the Anchor Smash. Damage reduction. Tomato dying. Anna with a triple kill. He Liquid. got baited. He Bent got baited by in. the illusion. Sucking them towards these illusions and battering them back. I'm a little surprised that Tomato decided to buy back because uh, Rest also Brawl had buyback. Well. Yep, Brawl bought back, uh, but the Night Sunder was the first one who died, and so he didn't buy back immediately. A little bit of a disconnection there. I mean, what's, what's that about? They think Roshan could potentially be up, so they really want to secure it. I, he's 30 seconds away, and we know that. But he could have instant spawned, which is what TSM is probably thinking about. If they're keeping the track on Ravage, but they still don't know. Like we, This is the only thing that casters know better than the players. We know when Roshan's going to respawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the timer. We know everything. And the DD rune bottom as well. Let's see if Tamada can get his hands on that. Still holding the bottle that was gifted to him. He didn't have BKB because he gave it a test. He wanted to see if it works, and uh, they're going to blow up Zai. Yeah, Zai gone. Buyback is available for him this time. I see. We've got one there for Boxy as well. Problem is uh, only one barracks is left. One melee barracks, so still not playing against the Mega Creeps, but TSM FTX, they want to get it. Base in trouble. Like, what are these yeah, illusions I mean, no? here? It's like six illusions, if I can count. Magandang magandang gabi sa inyo. Good evening mga lodi. First time ulit natin mapapanood sa compared match si Ana for standing pa'y matumba. Roshan is up. What do we got? We got refresher. So who's that gonna be for? Not just for the TB, double BKB, double meta. Here's our replay, watching it back. Ana just comes in, clears them. 
And maybe the blinding light from Keeper of the Light there made a difference. Like, maybe he knew what the real target is, and then they got bounced back and he used it on the wrong target. Yeah, I'm not sure. Smart are definitely getting tricked somehow. We'll just say Anna played the mind games on him. Jedi <laughs> Boxy in the thick of things, they're aiming for this TB and they just ravage and slay. Yes, sir, type. Type back in. Sable like caught and slow. Yes, sir, they're doing a hell of a lot from it. I thought they were gonna give Aegis to Terrorblade. I mean, Tiny I mean, at this he moment. Back. Like, yeah, he he did buy back. I saw the Tiny, but I would still give it to Terrorblade. I'll. Yes, sir, Jan, welcome to Joel. Zai SS is the key, Stydanter ulti. No mega creep, so they can push out the waves. They're not the best at pushing out the waves. They do have Aghanim Scepter on the Tidehunter plus the Anchor Smash. Yeah. Vyvern with the Splinter Blast. That's okay ish. It's nothing uh, spectacular. Let's go, let's go. Kaya pa to, kaya pa. Ito na kinakatok na second tower mid lane. Come to the realization that they have very little tower damage. Zai frontlining. They're going to try and move into them here with Bryle and Dubu. Nightmare from the Bane, the Abyssal Blade comes, the Undisc popped, but with Boxy and Anna on his tail, Bane is not long for this world. Dead for a minute with buyback available while you see Moon Meander just shoving out bottom lane absolutely where he needs yeah, to he's be. He's trying his best and also Brile, he did kill a creep that oh, Mickey was steeping to. Okay. Uh, that, 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 that was <laughs> yeah, Mickey, he killed one creep. On a courier now as well, Ethel ends in the drain. Brile. He's been found by Mika though, has to BKB, might have to try and TP, but th there's that curse, right? They've got the cancel on TP if need be, and now Boxy's arrival with the side of the Zabia. They can kill him once, and uh, if they can do that, they can kill him twice. He looks very dead. Oh, this is going to be him dead for like 100 seconds, die back dentro, eh? 125. Oh, die so he just had the TP dead for two minutes, he's about to respawn, and now Tiny's gone for two minutes. So that's like four minutes of Liquid doing whatever the hell they want, yeah. pretty much. It might be time to go just bull rush towards this TSM base. I think the line is now drawn by well, Doom. Uh, Bunker, you know, him. Hold high ground. <coughs> Don't leave these protective tier 3, tier 4 towers. It's still a very long time. 100 seconds. Ana gonna TP back to base, replenish his mana. And also he does have a mind breaker. So he jumps someone, silence into Abyssal Blade, into another bash. Uh, it's a lot of control, especially for the back lines. Yes, I'm still doing a, a very good job being pinged out now by Liquid that Saberlight and Moon Meander still stuck down there. And they'll have Anna able to clear out the waves and then jump back in. Oh! Instant bash. Going straight for the bash on Saberlight. Boxy's arrived as well, so another hero dead, but thankfully for TSM, he yeah. does have the buyback ready. Uh, uh, nice you know, not an instant bash, it's Woo. just a Abyssal Blade, but uh, it sounds yeesh. cool if it's a first hit bash. There's no way he TPs out there, not with the attack speed, even if Abyssal is not well, uh, going like, to uh, no, land uh, seven, eight hits in that time. You'll get one eventually. Now, that kill does mean it slows down, delays the push towards high ground from Liquid. But TSM are, you know, hemmed back. I mean, they do have Spectre uh, with the Night Vision, also Moonshard on top of that, and also Vyvern, so they can see Night Stalker approaching, especially if they, like, pop the ulti on Spectre, so they will know where everyone is, and uh, that's a good way to start a fight. I don't part time, man. Yes, I actually want to move out of their base at all. They are just waiting oh, MG, for Anna is so good, yes. Tiny to respawn. The eight Two-time TI champion. Good minute by their own tier threes, and this, like you said, Liquid given the opportunity to do whatever the hell they want for a good four or five minutes now, allowing their ultis to come back off cooldown, allowing the Spectre to, you know, try and catch up to the Terra Blade in terms of net worth. And big item. Zai does have a full refresher. He also does have enough mana. Refresher on Tide Hunter, not I'm already. He's got a lot of items, right? And thank you for subscribing to my channel, Nadin Malodi. Thank you. His inventory completely full. And have you seen what Anna's got queued up, by the way, Lacoste? 
Is it time? It is time. It's a divine rapier territory. He's got it queued. The the bay, no? Money up towards that beautiful investment. A weapon of mass destruction there, perspective. Tomato also realizing where the threat is coming from. We're talking about vibrant alpha. Ah, no, 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 but no, yeah, it's a man, pops, 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 pops. The abyssal blade is a huge change inside the build a little bit, putting in, putting out mana style and also. Ah, pano oro niyo yung monkey business ng ano? Ng OG. Meron niya sa YouTube eh. Na inter, na di Topson. Kung naglalaro pa ba sila ng Dota? Si Topson alam natin naglalaro ba. Pero si Nagpapub games pa rin daw siya. Eh, panoor sa mga business show ng OG sa YouTube. Again, always very good at holding on to this high grand vision. Dubu, you know, one of the best at getting wards down and telling his team to play into that vision. Absolutely. A moon meander, also big item. This ethereal blade. Oh look, yeah. Ah, there's a cheese. Someone is lactose intolerant. Pretty much everyone from Team Liquid are not picking it up. Yeah, need some of that lactase. Boxy, just jumping out, scouts him, and realizes that's not where he wants to be. Marcy gonna go in with the help of Mickey, just straight up cursing the Night Stalker. Expending that BKB duration, now blinking back in towards the Tide, who's on nice stuff, and he's about control. to die. Always oh, healed though, Tomato. E he's gonna refreshing BKB again, but the Ravages, where are they? He's got two of them, and he's holding, waiting for his time to shine, but he dies before the second one can come out. Terrorblade still so incredibly tanky. Just standing there and wailing away at Insania. Another toss back. Broil sends the Spectre into the middle. Tomato with a triple kill clears them up. The Rampage is killed. He's not gonna find it. It's stolen by Dubu. As TSM holding their jungle. He's banging it out. Yeah, he got the cheese as well. Saberlight tanking all the damage in that fight. Getting e-bladed by Moon Meander. Saves him. He comes back into the fight. So that means that they wasted pretty much everything. While Terrorblade sitting on the high ground. Boss, we need to make him one out. We need to make him one out. We need to make him one out. Tumahimik daw muna ako, kaya na bahala ah This is gonna be Mega Creeps, buybacks are coming in Yeah, but there's no buyback on the on the Tidehunter, right? He's 400 gold away from it, so that second Ravage unused A really sad state there for Liquid as they get on top of Ana Spectre tossed in, losing a lot of HP, the Cold Embrace is good But Sableye, the reinitiation arrow, this Night Stalker perfect for diving the back lines And Ana's just pummeled into the ground, dead for two minutes and TSM looking Where's like they're the going to e claim game one here. Ah, uh, still not going to die. <laughs> the E-Blade now from Moon Meander, but dragged back in. TSM not going to let the man die. Diving back in towards Mickey. Two calls gone for over two minutes. And game one in this best of two. Go uh, the yeah, yeah. of TSM FTX. I mean, Gary, this is the first game of the tournament. And throw, nuk, throw, nuk, throw. Like this, uh, I'm pretty hyped oh, look up. look at him. So, like, so pumped. It was a spectacular game for him. That Night Stalker, the target. Nice game, nice game. Silence. Absolutely. And also Moon Meander playing with him. Ah. Uh, last of the... Maybe? No.